The headlines, Parliament approves plan for part of Clico Empire. Small businesses call for ease and restrictions on outdoor water use. And a lawyer lambastes the judicial system as client is released from jail after four years without trial. Welcome to Nation News for Tuesday, March the 1st, 2016. Thanks for joining us. One part of the collapsed Clico empire is closer to final resolution. While a lot of attention has been focused on the main Clico insurance business, there was also the case of British American Insurance, which was owned by the Trinidad-based business group. The House of Assembly has now approved a near $100 million lifeline for the 15,000 or so British American policyholders and employees. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair introduced a resolution for an $84.6 million bond issue for Sajiko Life Inc., which is to take over British Americans' life insurance business. The government will also allocate $8 million in cash to preserve the pension plans of 72 British American employees. The plan includes government accepting control of the insurer's $26.6 million in assets. Opposition leader Mia Motley said that when coupled with the Clico Resco plan, government and by extension Barbadian taxpayers now had more than $400 million in additional debt to meet. She said government could have done more, including permitting a wider forensic audit into the two companies to increase chances of recouping more money. The director of the NIS has told the final town hall meeting on health financing that Barbados needs to take a serious look at a national health insurance scheme. Speaking on Monday night, Ian Carrington said 39% of the country's health care bill was being paid by Barbadians out of their own pockets. The World Health Organization recommendation is for a maximum of 20%, so that's almost twice. Mr. Carrington said the benefits under a health insurance scheme would depend on the level of contributions. Those unable to contribute would receive subsidized care. The Water Authority's new ban on hoses and other outdoor water usage is causing consternation among some small businesses. On the first day of the restrictions, Car Valley operators like Michael Thorpe of Midas Magic and Daddy O'Greenwich of Shine Vehicle Care Center have led the chorus of pleas for an ease. Mr. Thorpe said some jobs can't be done thoroughly without the use of a hose. Well, Mr. Greenwich said the restrictions were not clear and he was seeking clarity. The restrictions aren't clear as to who they really apply to. There, there was no dialogue to really see what the, the public feels about it and that kind of thing. They were just created in a room and, and posted in the media, which I think is wrong. We can't go about doing things that way, and the authorities need to relook that. Um, but how are we to put water restrictions on the hotel sector in, in the in the in the height? hike to our season because they're gonna you can't expect to tell hoteliers not to fill the pools not to water the plants not to fill the ponds that kind of thing when a tourist go to a hotel and he doesn't have water in his pool what is he supposed to do he's supposed to turn around and say you know what um they don't have water in the pools so i can go in the beach no it can't work the water authority has indicated that there will be exemptions for some operations and these should be announced soon the ban was instituted because of the lack of rainfall the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union's belief that it has made headway in its push for payment for correcting CXE school-based assessment papers is being put to the test at a meeting with the Ministry of Education. Some union members refused last year to perform the assessments, putting this important component of the CXE system at risk. This latest meeting, aimed at resolving the impasse, followed one last month, after which Union President Mary Redmond uh, told Nation News that the ministry had received a clear understanding of the magnitude of work involved. She was hoping the discussions would turn to actual compensation terms. She said ministry officials were surprised at just what went into supervising and marking school-based assessments, which run alongside actual examinations. We had made a lot of progress at the last meeting. As I said, I think that in a very practical and realistic way, the perhaps saying hadn't a clue is perhaps too harsh not too harsh it may be a realistic way 
of stating the extent to which they were not aware of how much work was involved in, this SBA, in doing CXC's SBA work. The work involved both really for the teachers as well as the students. And um, there was shock at the volume, for example, of the size of even one SBA, completed SBA that we showed them in relation to home economics, which was 108 pages long. And that particular teacher had 40 of those students. So they got to see in a, in a real and practical way how much work is really involved. A lawyer has deemed the justice system broken after a client was freed of a murder charge more than six weeks after the order was first given. Arthur Holder said the system needed to be overhauled to prevent the innocent from being wrongly imprisoned. He argued that it was a broken legal system which caused his client Michael Greenwich to spend the extra time in jail after he had been on remand for four years. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions had instructed the Commission of Police to discontinue the murder case on January the 11th for lack of evidence. However, the letter was reportedly lost in the system and Mr. Greenwich spent 44 more days in prison. Mr. Holder said this was unconstitutional and he would be taking legal action for damages. In any case, he said that had the police done their job, the case would not have been brought. A my client would have remained in jail unlawfully based on a directive from the person who's authorizing law to start and discontinue matters. As per the constitution, he's the man authorizing law who, who commences matters and who discontinues them. And this missive was sent off so that with his, with his, I will be suing the Attorney General and the Commissioner of Police for the unlawful imprisonment of Michael Greenwich. Now imagine you are newly disabled while in work and the employer immediately sets about trying to get rid of you. Well, that's what the President of the Council for the Disabled, Maria Holder-Small, has indicated may be happening. She said, there appears to be a trend of employers medically boarding workers as soon as they develop a disability, whether through in health or injury. In her remarks at the launch of a month of activities for people with disabilities, Mrs. Holder Small said this rush was the biggest concern of the association. She said management of businesses viewed the newly disabled as liabilities rather than assets and wanted to send them home instead of trying to retrofit offices. She said other members of the council's board were victims of such practices. Mrs. Holder Small called for more sensitivity training for employers. This is Nation News. Up next is Carl Martindale with our weekly commentary this week on water conservation. But first, a reminder that you can keep up to date by logging on to nationnews.com or follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. The world is facing a water crisis and it is a terrifying fact. Barbadians are now beginning to feel the full effects of a lack of rainfall and an aging pipe network which leads to frequent outages and wastage. More than 600 million people worldwide lack access to safe water. In some countries, women and children spend all day collecting water. The World Economic Forum says water crisis is the number one risk societies face. Here in the region, water restrictions have been put in place in Antigua, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, and here in Barbados. We know the Barbados Water Authority can be tardy in responding to reports, but we have a role to play in using it wisely. Let us not waste this precious resource. In sport, surfer Chelsea Tua finished fifth from a field of 84 in her first pro event for the year in New South Wales and Australia. Tua progressed through the rounds of the Taggart Women's Pro to the quarterfinals where she was up against world number one Sally Fitzgibbons. After controlling the first part of the heat, Tua saw her opponent take control and go on to win both the match and the competition. Tua's next event will be the Australian Open of Surfing. And finally, 
A British man who flew to Germany using his girlfriend's passport only realized the mistake when he had arrived at his destination, having gone through security. Josh Reed, who is six foot three and has a beard, traveled from London, Stansted, to Dortmund, according to a newspaper report. According to the 21-year-old, security at the gate only checked his boarding pass, meaning he only spotted that he had round uh, travel documents when he landed in Germany. But at no point did anyone else notice that he wasn't uh, the girlfriend, Sophie Watkins. Josh managed to get through security at the German airport using his driving license. And girlfriend Sophie sent his actual passport out via courier so he could fly home. That ends this edition of Nation News. Join us again on Wednesday when you can also pick up your Midweek Nation or subscribe to our e-paper.